Good morning, saints. I pray that everyone is doing well and you're having a blessed week this week. Um, I myself am doing okay. I can't complain too much. Uh, busy at work, busy at home, uh, preparing for my new grandchild that will be coming uh, soon or well, soon on this year. And I'm doing well, and I'm just praying that everybody else is doing and having a great time. As I look to this coming week, um, and as I was looking to my lesson this week, I was just feeling as though uh, things are changing. Uh, there's a time of change that's going on. There's so many changes that's happening. Um, changes with the coronavirus and changes with our government and, and changes with ourselves and our jobs and all kinds of things that's happening. So it was just put to my heart that there was a time of change that's happening in our world right now. Um, and it's the time of change that's happening in your lives right now, whether you know it or not. Uh, and, and it just made me search for that passage that was uh, kind of understanding to everything that's going on right now. And it led me to uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 3, verses 1 through 8. And it, it goes as there's a time for everything. And with so much that's happening right now and, and with so many things that's going on, I just thought this was a good passage um, to read for this morning. But I'm going to start off with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to lead into uh, this time of uh, change and the time for everything. So, Father, we just want to thank you, and we give you grace, honor, and glory with all that you do. We pray that you just continue to bless and keep us as we go throughout this week. We pray for the pastors that will be forthcoming with the message this morning. We pray for those saints that are, um, are struggling right now or, or are just going through hard times, Father. And we just pray that you give them the strength that, that only you can give, Father, the only uh, person that they can hug sometimes is you, Lord, because there, there's no one else there. So, Father, we just pray for your strength in those those hard times. We also pray for the good times, Father, that uh, those that are doing well and uh, things have changed in their lives and um, and things are getting better and, and things aren't as bad as what they were maybe a year ago, Father, or maybe even six months ago. So we just pray that you just continue to bless and keep us as we go throughout this day. Watch over our families and our friends. Watch over our members. Watch over our pastors and our ministers and our deacons, Father, as we prepare for uh, another week um, and another uh, year as to come um, to see what's going to happen now, Father, in this time of change. In your son's name, I do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, again, I was going to read from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, and it reads as such. Uh, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I pray that uh, this touches somebody somewhere, because uh, we know that through all of these things, there is a time for everything. There was a time that we were able to go out and have fun and, and, and hang out with our friends. And then there became a time where we couldn't even go out our door. We had There's a time where we didn't have to wear a mask and we didn't have to worry about anything. But now there's a time where we have to wear a mask wherever we go. Times do change. God knew this was going to happen before we did because he... Foresee, he foresees everything. He, he knows all that's going to happen. And what we have to do is just understand that this is our time. This is our time for our change. This is our time to deal with the situations. This is our time to mourn those that have passed away through uh, due to COVID. 
and then we have the time that we uh, celebrate those that made it through and, and are still around and still serving our Father in heaven. We just know that the times to change will come. And this is this this time for the change. We, there's going to be another time when Christ comes. There's going to be a, a better time where he comes down and, and he reigns amongst the earth. And he takes care of everything that's going to happen. And all those that believe in him will be caught up and taken into the heaven with him. So those are the times that I look forward to. Those are the times that a lot of us are thinking is going on right now. It's just the end. It's over. Everything is gone. And it's not. Because our father has not deemed it yet. We don't know the hour or the time that he will come. But we just look forward to that time. We look forward to that time of change. But right now, we have to deal with the times of change that we have right now. Please take care of yourselves out there. Be careful out there in the streets. Um, COVID is not gone. So please do still protect yourselves out there as best as you can. But there's going to be a time where we don't have to wear a mask anymore. There's going to be a time where we can uh, go on vacation and not have to worry about anything. There's going to be a time when we'll be able to get back to the way things used to be. And those are the times that a lot of us are looking forward to. But until that time, we have to trust in our Lord and trust in our own uh, um, thoughts or our own feelings and ways about things that's happening right now. And take your time to know that God is still there and he's going to always be there. And I'm thankful that uh, I have him um, there to lean on through these harsh times. So God bless you and keep you. And we look forward to the service that is forthcoming. I'll talk to you soon. Take care of yourself. And we look for that time we'll be able to go back into our church and spend time together. In God's name. Amen. Take care. Come on, make a joyful noise in this house. Make a joyful noise. Yeah. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising, just forget about your worries, let your troubles all behind you, don't you wait another minute, just get up and on your feet, get dancing, singing, jumping, leaping, get to shouting, make it loud and make it glorious. Stop rejoicing, praising, lifting, raising, get the shouting, make it loud and make this praise glorious. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing. And you see the people praising Just forget about your worries Let your troubles all behind you Don't you wait another minute Just get up and on your feet Get dancing, singing, jumping, leaping Get shouting, make it loud and make it glorious Start rejoicing, praising, lifting, raising Get shouting, make it loud and Make this praise Singing, jumping, leaping Get the shouting, make it loud and make it glorious Start rejoicing, praising, lifting, raising Get the shouting, make it loud and make this praise glorious Glorious Glory Lift up your voice in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. I was created to make your praise glorious. Why don't you just tell the Lord tonight? I was created to make 
your praise. Oh, yes, yes, I was. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was created to make your praise. Oh, yes. I was created to make your praise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was created to make your praise. Oh, yes. Ooh. Come on. I was created to make your praise glorious, glorious. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was created to make your praise glorious. You might as well just go ahead and give God the praise. If you're gonna do it, I was created to make your praise glorious, glorious. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Created to make your praise glorious. Good morning, Philadelphia Bible Fellowship. Just want to welcome everyone on this Sunday morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here this morning. We got some announcements as we go into our pastoral emphasis this morning. We want to welcome everyone, those of you who are joining us uh, uh, online. Amen. Praise God. First of all, we would just want to start with uh, acknowledging uh, our dear pastor and his wife, Sister Marilyn, uh, Pastor James and his wife. Uh, we just want to acknowledge Sister Marilyn. We want to say... Uh, Congrats and cahoots that she has gone through a whole year of process through her cancer treatments uh, as we continue to pray for her and her family. Uh, it's been an overwhelming year. As anyone that's gone through cancer knows that uh, it can be difficult at times. But we want to acknowledge her here this morning and tell her that we're still praying for her. We are praying for her complete and total continuing recovery, not only health-wise but mentally as well we want to acknowledge our sister Simone as well uh, that we're praying for her continued prayers for her as uh, she's at home and still working but we want to acknowledge that our dear sisters and brothers in Christ as well um, praying for John and his family John Farrell and his family as well uh, all the kids his um, we just want to acknowledge all our families, amen, from Philadelphia Bible Fellowship that uh, we continue to pray for all of you. And once again, uh, just uh, keep us in prayer as well, amen. Uh, as far as uh, some of our announcements, prayer and power for Wednesday night. We want to thank, I want to thank everyone personally for coming on as we continue through the book of James. We are ending, we are following up and finishing the book of James now. We pray that all of you who have joined um, and continue to join, just look out for your Zoom, link on, and join us every Wednesday between 7 and 8. Sometimes we go over, sometimes we go shorter. But it's, a, an, ex it's an exciting time. I have a great time. I'm enjoying myself and as well as many others. Uh, we want to acknowledge all of those who joined us on the line. And our prayer line as well, which is on Thursdays at 9 o'clock. If you find yourself in the need of prayer, <clears throat> Let's be honest, some of us don't know what to say, but just jump on and uh, acknowledge, uh, be there, enjoy the prayer time, and, and just allow God to do His thing as He always does. Uh, Sundays, we still have our Trader Joe's. Uh, come by Sunday after service. We will be there. Someone is always there. We will come out and deliver a box right to your car for you. We're still taking precautions. Uh, we ask that you do the same. So after service, if you're in need of a food basket or a food box, uh, just look us up. Uh, Sunday after service, just come down to the church building, and we will be more than happy to give you a box. Amen. Uh, our big announcements for uh, coming up for June is Adventure Men as we continue to plan for our trip coming in June. This is the second weekend in June. We are telling all men. Make sure you get connected. Make sure you get in touch with someone. 
Um, right now, as of right now, the cost is $100 for the whole weekend. That is food, transportation, uh, the cost of for the weekend up there as well. Everything, that includes everything for that trip. Transportation, food, and the admission for the Adventure Fest itself. We have our very own Pastor Tom who will be preaching that Sunday morning. We are excited. Uh, he is one of the speakers up there, so please do get connected. Uh, reach out to myself or any of the deacons, any of the men in the men's ministry. You can also link on to adventuremen.com and you will see the link on there. All the information is on there. Praise God. That is in June, so we ask that you be a part of it. Amen. Uh, at this time, we just want to open up in prayer. And uh, we're going to ask the Lord to continue to do what He's always done. And that is to show Himself in ways that we will probably never understand until that day comes. Uh, he has shown Himself to be true and faithful. Amen. Even when we can't make sense of things. Let's open up in prayer this morning. Join me this morning as we open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you continue to do. Father, as um, oftentimes um, we look at situations, we look at the trials that we go through, uh, we question why do we go through these situations, why is this occurring to me, why me, why me? Father, and I ask not only myself, but those who are in questioning of their own selves, Lord, that instead of saying, why me, just um, that we can acknowledge that you are faithful, you are true, and when we can't make sense of things, oh Lord, that we can look to you and say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? Father, maybe you are working in a mysterious ways as you always do, Lord, in our own lives to get us to that place of understanding, that place of um, grace, that place of acknowledging your truth. Oh God, we just want to thank you for everything that you've continued to brought us out of here in this past year through this whole COVID season, Lord, that if we want to play, call it COVID season, Lord, as you protect us so many in the church lord father as our own members oh lord that you've um impacted father you have brought brought them all out of it and we thank you for that we thank you for that oh god we lift our the mary family we put the garcia family lord we put, put raise up the Farrell family oh god uh nelson family oh god we thank you for all these families lord Father, that you continue to use in a, in a magnificent and special way. Father, um, we thank you and that you will continue to show your mercy, Father, and your grace. And even in our own lives, Lord, we pray for our leadership. We pray for our deacons. We pray for the women's ministry, the men's ministry, oh Lord. We pray for even our pastoral staff, Lord, Father, who, them, including myself, Lord, that... Lord, we all have our days, O oh Lord, but that you shown yourself to call us into a place of being just faithful and oftentimes not understanding, Lord. We thank you for all things, Lord. We thank you for the building that we are in, though we might not be physically in, Lord, but we, it's there and we thank you for it. Father, as we continue our construction process, uh, Lord, make this a easy transition, Lord, with permits and and contractors and, and laborers, Lord, that we're going to need them, O oh, Father. We thank you for all things, Lord, even in the neighborhood that you've placed us in, O oh, God. Thank you for all things, and we give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Uh, and we'll, as we continue, and as the man of God brings the word, um, be looking out, and I'll see you after service as we will do our communions. God bless you.
and love you guys see you later bye bye good morning philadelphia bible fellowship family and friends i am so excited that you desire to be a part of our virtual worship experience this morning i pray that the lord will give you exactly what you need for such a time as this let us now enter into a time of prayer our father and our god we thank you for the opportunity to be able to open up the book of life to find nuggets of truth for such a time as this. I pray, O oh God, that you would edify these, your saints, as they navigate the difficulties of their lives. I pray, Father, that you would bring one to a salvific understanding of your son. I pray, O oh God, that you would anoint your manservant so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would it be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer? Have your way, O oh God, in this word, but do it not by might nor by power, but ultimately by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, saints, we are going to journey into the Old Testament, to the book of Ruth, chapter 1. And I want to read... Ruth chapter 1, beginning at verse 19. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Myra, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. Wow. I want to preach this morning from the thought from beauty to bitter and from bitter to beauty. Saints, every now and then the gospel preacher must wrestle with the bitterness of life. Every person in this virtual congregation has found themselves in the bowels of bad times, on the ground floor of grief, and in the dungeon of despair. COVID-19 has seen to this. Over 500,000 families have experienced this. Many have been engulfed by the flames of pain, some find themselves falling into the depths of depression. The crucible of life's ill experiences can creep up at a moment's notice. All you have to do is keep on living and you will be forced to swallow the bitter pill of life. It was Florence Nightingale who lamented Life is a hard fight, a struggle, a wrestling with the principle of evil, hand to hand, foot to foot. I don't know about you, but I have discovered that it doesn't seem to matter how hard we fight to do what is right and how committed we are to living holy life continues to be bittersweet. Life has its ups and downs. Life can produce both smiles and frowns. Life teaches us to endure the good with the bad. Life is truly a mixture of happy and sad. 
What do we do when the bitterness of life captures our soul? What do we do when the vicissitudes of life incarcerates our experiences? Do we give up on God? Do we check out on life? Come on now, as you sit in your virtual pew, in your living room, in your family room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, don't you look at me like I'm crazy. Naomi, Naomi lost everything. She lost her husband. She lost her two sons. She lost her wealth. She convinced herself that she was not even worthy of her name. She renamed herself Myra which means bitter because the nectar of life had become sour and the fruitfulness of life has spoiled. I imagine that some of us can relate to Naomi today. Some of us need some help today because it seems like life has dealt us a bad hand. If your heart is bad, you ought to call a cardiologist. If your brain is not functioning properly, you ought to call a neurologist. But if your soul ache and you need a word from the Lord, then a cardiologist or neurologist won't do. You need a preacher. You need someone who can open up the pages of the Holy Writ and give you a word. You need somebody who can tell what thus saith the Lord. When well, you came to the right place this morning, you came to Philadelphia Bible Fellowship. Maybe you're here in America. Maybe you're in Europe. Maybe you're in Asia. Maybe you're in Africa. You came to a place where there are some men who can preach the word of God and rightly divide it. 43 years ago, a school district in California organized several hundred students to participate in a real woman essay contest in a parade in Santa Rosa, California. This event caught on in numerous school districts and communities across the United States. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter Proclaim the week of March 8th as Women's History Week. Six years later, Congress established the month of March as Women's History Month. Well, today, saints, I want to preach about a great woman of God. I want to preach about what to do when life becomes bitter. I want to preach from beauty to bitter and from bitter to beauty. Is that all right, saints? Right there in your virtual pew, is that all right? This timeless story of tragedy and redemption begins with a great famine in Israel, which was the result of the sin of the land. An Ephrathite of the tribe of Judah named Elimelech lives in Bethlehem with his wife, Naomi. They travel to Moab, a mountainous city in present day Jordan. Elimelech and Naomi have two sons. Their names are Malon and Kilion. Abimelech dies and leaves his wife and his two sons in Moab. Malon and Kilion take Moabite wives. Malon marries a Moabite named Ruth. And Kilion marries Orpah. After several years, tragedy strikes again. Malon and Kilion are dead. The destitute Naomi decides to return to Bethlehem. Naomi strongly urges Ruth and Orpah to seek their own fortunes in Moab among their own people 
and among their own gods. Orpah kisses Naomi and says goodbye. Ruth holds on to Naomi and refuses to let go. Ruth utters one of the most timeless phrases of love and commitment in the Bible. She says, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth return to Bethlehem. As they returned to Bethlehem, the women of the city were excited to see Naomi. Naomi refuses to be called Naomi, which means beautiful. She wants to be called Myra, which means bitter. Ruth gleans grain in the field of Naomi's wealthy kinsman, Boaz. Boaz notices Ruth, and through a series of events, Ruth marries Boaz. And they have a son whom Naomi cares for. Listen to this. And so the women of Bethlehem say a remarkable statement. Naomi has a son. It is because of this phrase that many scholars have suggested that while Ruth is the main character, Naomi is the central character. What I want to do, saints, is wrestle with what do I do when life becomes bitter, when beauty becomes bitter, and I want to show you how God can transform your bitterness into beauty. I want to give you three principles today from this text. The first principle I want you to get in your spirit, in your soul, is through bitterness. Trust God. Through bitterness, trust God. Look at verse 19 with me. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem, that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? Look at verse 20. But she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Myra. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. And the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? Naomi's life is the personification of bitterness. Now, before you chastise Naomi uh, for wanting to change her name from Naomi to Myra and from beautiful to bitter, you must understand the road she had to travel. There is an old Native American adage that says, do not talk about me unless you have walked a mile in my moccasins. Deacon Rick, Naomi's bitterness is not just subjective, it is also objective. In other words, her bitterness was not just defined by how she felt but by the reality of her life. Sometimes saints, we have a, can have a bad day because of how we feel. But sometimes life smacks us in the face with real negative circumstances. In other words, Naomi had some legitimate reasons to be bitter. Naomi left Bethlehem full and returned empty. She lost her husband, Abimelech. She lost her sons, Malon and Kilion. She had no offspring to carry her husband's name. 
She was poor. She was destitute. There was no life insurance to sustain her. There was no Social Security or Medicare to keep her well. We make the mistake, saints, in thinking that the Christian should never have a bad day. Life will see to that. It will not always be sunny and bright. Sometimes it does rain. Sometimes hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes can destroy everything we cherish in life. When I read this text, I get the sense that Naomi's pain and bitterness went to some really deep emotional and spiritual levels. Consider the last phrase in verse 20. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Maybe Naomi thought that her decisions were the cause of her affliction. Maybe she wondered if God was making her pay in her present for wrongs she committed in her past. Anybody ever felt like that? I know I have. I might as well just be transparent. Maybe she wondered if leaving Bethlehem in the first place for Moab during the drought was really a lack of faith on her part. Maybe she wondered how could one lose a husband and two sons be a coincidence. The name Malan means sickly. The name Kilion means feeling. What did I do wrong? Maybe she pondered in her heart. Maybe she wondered if encouraging her sons to marry Moabite women angered God. According to the Mosaic law, the marriage of Hebrew men to Moabite women meant a banishment of 10 generations of one's descendants from participating in Israeli worship. This is according to Deuteronomy chapter 23 and three. Maybe she wondered, saints, maybe she wondered if God was judging her because she had no grandchildren for Ruth or Orpah's wombs were seemingly closed. I don't know. How many of us have ever wondered why God has allowed so much bitterness in hell to erupt in our lives? We wonder why the Lord uh, has testified against us and has afflicted us with sickness, with poverty, with no job, with no husband, with no wife, with no children, or with the lack of something that we really want or believe we really need. Am I on your block this morning? Am I driving shotgun in your car? The amazing thing about Naomi is that though her bitterness, both external and internal, both objective and subjective, she never lost her confidence in God. Naomi changed her name to express the bitterness and pain she felt. Naomi was not rejecting God by openly expressing her pain. One of the reasons why some of us get hypertension or other diagnoses is because we keep our pain inside. God welcomes our honesty about where we really are. Naomi never accused God of wrongdoing. She did not understand what God was doing any more than we sometimes understand what God is doing, but she was willing to trust God anyhow. Uh, I learned this from Naomi that when I might find myself in a bitter place, trust God anyhow. When I examine Pastor Tom, this ancient book, 
I discover that in this book, there is no mention of a further or rather a formal gathering of worship. In this book, there is no sermon or formal prayer. In this book, there is no psalm or song. In this book, no priest or prophet appears. In Hebrew culture, a culture that is steeped with tradition and ritual, only one ritual is mentioned in this book, and that ritual is marriage. Well, while it seems that this book is devoid of worship, praise, prayer, prophet, and priest, can I suggest to you, my brother and sister in Christ, that this book is saturated with worship and praise. For in this book is the story of two women of faith who are willing through trial, trouble, and tribulation to place their faith in their God. Ruth followed Naomi. Not because she wavered in her faith, but because she saw a woman and a mother who lost her husband, two sons, a fortune, and still trusted in God. Come here, the son of David. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I've discovered, saints, that whenever I find myself leaning on my own understanding, I mess things up every time. When I lean upon my own understanding, I have a tendency to fall on my face. When I lean upon my own understanding, valleys are never exalted. When I lean upon my own understanding, mountains are never made low. When I lean upon my own understanding, crooked ways are not made straight. When I lean upon my own understanding, rough places are not made plain. When I lean upon my own understanding, I become like John Newton and be responsible for enslaving Africans and transporting them across the Atlantic Ocean and what we call the Middle Passage. When I lean upon my own understanding, I become like Charles Darwin and create an evolutionary dogma that renders the Genesis account of creation to a fairy tale. When I lean upon my own understanding, I'll be like an Adolf Hitler and create the Nazi party in the Gestapo. When I lean upon my own understanding, I might declare a jihad and fly a plane into the World Trade Center in the Pentagon. But saints, it gets even more personal than that. When I lean upon my own understanding, I won't love my wife right. When I lean upon my own understanding, I won't respect my husband right. When I lean upon my own understanding, I might walk out on my children. When I lean upon my own understanding, I might just lose my mind. When times are too tough and the going is too rough. But when I trust in God, hallelujah. I said, when I trust in God, through bitterness, when I trust in God, I can be a slave ship captain and find Jesus in the middle of a violent storm and declare amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through bitterness, trust God. Let me give you principle number two. Life's sweetness is often built from bitterness. 
Look with me at Ruth chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Verse 14. Then the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. Verse 15. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter in law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has bore him. The, the interesting thing, saints, about Naomi's life is that it mirrors the life of many. How many of you realize that life's sweetness is often built from bitterness? In other words, the difficulties and tragedies of your life are only one part of your story. Listen to me. <clears throat> Naomi is blessed in ways that she could never imagine. In chapter four, a year ago or so in chapter one. When she arrived in Bethlehem as Myra, she could not imagine that Ruth would marry one of the wealthiest men in Judah. His name was Boaz. She could not imagine that God would open Ruth's womb and allow her to have a grandson. She could not imagine that the same women who heard her call herself Myra bitterness would now call her Blessed of the Lord, she could not imagine that her grandson's name would become famous in Israel. Yet I believe that there is one more thing that she could not have imagined. <laughs> Look at verse 15 with me one more time. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter in law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has borne him. This phrase is foundational to understanding this second principle. Yes, Naomi has experienced severe hardships. Yes, she has left Israel married and secure, but returned widowed and poor. Yes, all these things are true. But what is also true is that God brought great blessings and sweetness out of her tragedy. This blessing or what I call sweetness was even greater than seven sons. Or in other words, it was greater than an abundance of heirs. What was this blessing? Well, I'll tell you what it was, saints. God gave Naomi Ruth. Glory be to God. Through her difficult times, Naomi continued to trust God. And God in his time, not our time, in his time, not our time, not in our Kronos time, but in his Chironic time, God blessed her greatly. Even in our sorrow, calamity, and bitterness, God can bring great blessings. I want you saints to remember the resources God has provided you don't you allow bitterness and disappointment to blind you of what God can do. There is no secret to what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. Louisa Stead 
So think about Women's History Month was a marvelous woman of faith. Her husband and their four-year-old daughter Lily wanted to enjoy a sunny day at a lake. While they were eating, they noticed a boy drowning and struggling for his life. Louisa's husband rushed out to the water to rescue the boy. In the process, unfortunately, both he and the boy died. Louisa and her daughter Lily watched helplessly. Louisa struggled with the question of why her husband, a man who was committed to Jesus Christ, had to die. In the midst of her night of doubt, sorrow and pain and despair, God gave her a song in the night to remind her that he can take her bitterness and make it sweet. Louisa wrote, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I have proved him over and over, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace, that's what we need, saints. We're going through a difficult time, oh, for grace to trust him or give God some praise and worship right where you sit in your virtual pew. Let me give you this final principle, principle number three. God's purposes are often realized through bitter situations. Look at verse 16 with me. It says, then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Verse 17, also the neighbor women gave him a saying, this is a son born, not to Ruth, but to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Through bitterness, trust God. Life's sweetness is often built from bitterness. And finally, God's purposes are often realized through bitter situations. Sometimes we find our purpose for living through our most bitter situations. Many who see the book of Ruth as simply a good read about a foreign girl who was fortunate. The fact of the matter is the book of Ruth is really about how God prepared for the births of David and of Jesus, the promised Messiah. Consider the phrase uttered by the neighboring women of Israel. There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. I begin to wonder why they would say such a thing. Wasn't the son born to Boaz and Ruth? What's the purpose of the phrase? Does anybody want to know? Does anybody really want to know what the purpose is of the phrase? And I believe if we get this, then we'll better understand how to make it through the bitter episodes of our own lives. These women under divine inspiration and providence were helping Naomi understand that God had a purpose for her life. <laughs> there was no way that Ruth could ever understand the larger purpose of her life. There was no way for Naomi to know that it was God's will for her to go back to Bethlehem. There was no way for Naomi to know that it was God's will that Ruth would return with her. There was no way for Naomi to know that it was God's will that Boaz and Ruth would be husband and wife. It was God's will that Obed would be born in Bethlehem. It was God's will that Obed would have a son named Jesse in Bethlehem. 
It was God's will that Jesse would have a young boy named David as his son in Bethlehem. It was God's will that David would grow up to be victorious over lions, bears, and giants. It was God's will that David would write psalms and prayers. It was God's will that the prophet Michael would predict that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. It was God's will that after 40 and two generations, a baby would be born in a manger in Bethlehem named Jesus. It was God's will that this baby would grow to be Israel's greatest king and savior. It was God's will that Jesus, the son of David, would suffer the cumulative suffering of humankind on a cross called Calvary. It was because of Naomi's faithful obedience to God. Her life and her legacy were significant, even though she could not see all of the results. She had a grandson, and his name was Obed. His name means servant worshiper. Naomi had no idea that the movement of her life was more than mere convenience for Ruth and herself. It was the fulfillment of God's purpose. It was more than Obed, Jesse, or David. It was about God's Savior. Hallelujah. It was about Jesus Christ. How do you know this preacher? While the emphasis, listen to me carefully, of the book of Ruth is on King David. The first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew includes four women, and one of them is Ruth. The emphasis of Matthew 1 is on Jesus Christ, the son of David, and the son of God, son of God and the son of Ruth. The fact of the matter is, we will not know the full purpose and importance of our lives until we are able by, by God's grace to look back from the perspective of eternity. We must make our choices with God's eternal values in mind. It is for this reason, saints, that we must not take moral shortcuts and live for short range pleasures because God has a divine purpose in mind for your life. As I hasten to a close, in 1797, Isabella Bomfrey was born a slave in New York State. At the tender age of nine, she was sold away by her slave owner to satisfy a debt. Her new slave master was a terrible man. She was forced to work hard. She was given in marriage and forced to birth five children. She lived under the constant fear of her children being sold away from her as she was sold away from her parents. She remembered her mother's lessons about God. Her mother taught her that God lived in the heavens and watched over her. When she could no longer take the harsh realities of slavery, she left with her infant daughter and found freedom with a Quaker family. In 1843, Isabella discovered that God had a purpose for her life. And that God's purposes are often realized through the most bitter of circumstances. She believed that God told her to tell the truth about the horrors of slavery and about the transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
with 25 cents in her pocket. Isabella changed her name to Sojourner Truth and became an itinerant preacher. This six, six foot black woman with a size 12 shoe and a booming voice who could not read or write, realized that through bitterness, trust God. Sojourner Truth realized that life's sweetness is often built through bitterness. Sojourner Truth understood that God's divine purposes for our lives are rooted out of bitter situations. Isabella said, the Lord gave me sojourner because I was to travel up and down the land and showing the people their sins and being a sign unto them. Afterwards, I told the Lord I wanted another name because everybody else had two names. And the Lord gave me truth because I was to declare the truth to people. It is my prayer, saints, that you have been blessed by this word, that God can take you from beauty to bitter and from bitter to beauty. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And if you are in need of prayer, or if you desire to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would ask that you would shoot us an email at admin at pbfministries.org. We want to pray for you. And if you want to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can say a simple prayer like this with me. Father, I recognize that I am a sinner and that I am in need of a savior. I believe that your son came and lived the perfect life and died on a cross for me. Forgive me of my sins, O oh God, and help me to live a brand new life. I want what that preacher talked about. My life has been bitter and I want it to be blessed. Save me, God, save me now. In Jesus name. Amen. Again, if you prayed that prayer, I would ask that you would shoot us an email. Let us know admin at pbfministries.org. For we want to pray with you and show you how to begin your new life with Christ. Saints, it is now time for our communion. May the Lord bless you again and may the Lord keep you. Good morning, saints. As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, I pray that uh, your heart will be full of what God has done for you this week and that what he still has in store for you throughout the rest of this week and year. Uh, things forthcoming that we don't even know, the good, the bad, the indifferent, all of those things will uh, be in our faces, but we just pray that God is going to be the one that's in control of all of those things and that he will make things blessed and better for all. Um, I just want to read from uh, a passage, Joshua 1, uh, verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I just felt as though that was a, a, just a good passage to have um, right now uh, because we need to know that God is with us wherever we go. Um, there's too, much, too many things that's going on out in these streets. There's too many things that's happening out in this world. Uh, people have changed. Um, um, attitudes have changed. Uh, I think being cooped up in the house and being cooped up and you can't go anywhere has just made people uh, like, a, like a caged lion, just want to just roar and just get out and and uh, just do things, but we have to uh, be safe and, and understand that there's a reason behind uh, this whole uh, uh, thing of being kept 
in the house and kept in check because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So I just pray that you uh, just continue to let God rule in your lives and rule in your hearts and know that he's going to get us through this and he's going to take care of us. And that one day, one day we'll be able to share communion with one another inside of our building again. And I just look forward to those days that are forthcoming. Hopefully this year we'll be able to uh, be together again and worship in the house of the Lord. But until that day, be careful and be safe and may God bless you. Amen. Have a good one. Blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. My story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you for the word, thank you for the word, powerful word, amen. As we are going into the Easter season, here we are already in March. Wow, how time flies, but uh, lifting the word of the Lord this morning, as we acknowledge what Christ has done on the cross, um, as we share our hearts with Him in all things, amen, in all things. Uh, as we take other elements, He says, I, sh I give my life down for you. And um, me personally, I, it's very hard to understand how He gives. He laid His life down for us. But He was resurrected on the third day and we thank our Heavenly Father for that for he has shown himself merciful over our own lives amen as we share bread this morning let's eat and he says drink of my blood praise God we want to thank our Heavenly Father this morning we want to thank all of you for joining us this morning as we continue to do what the Lord has called us to do we acknowledge our Lord Jesus Christ as we are in Lent season and we praise God for all that he's done for us and what he's done on the cross amen praise God as we close this morning as we end with our benediction song we thank you and continue to give to the church as uh, uh, we thank you for all the tithings and offerings that everyone has given. And be blessed. Have a great week. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.